Uh, let me uh, pray for us. Father, thank you for allowing us to study ancient uh, Greek. I pray that you help us today. Uh, I pray that you make the language clearer to us. Uh, I pray that you use it as a means of grace in our lives to think better thoughts of you and to believe more of your promises to us. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so let's uh, dive in. We'll look at uh, quiz 7b. So what is hasas, hase, hasan? As much as or as many as. Does anyone have a mnemonic device for that? Oh, as much as, as many as, there are a lot of S's that, uh, that could work. Um, all right. I kind of thought of like so much as because it looked like the word so. so. Oh, that, uh, that could help too. Uh, kaleo. Straight into English, right? We get our word call from this word. Uh, liquid future. Uh, if if a word ends in lambda, mu, or nu, those letters are called liquid letters. I don't know why. Uh, but it's very difficult to say an S sound after liquid. And so what they do is treat it as a contract verb. It already is a contract verb, so I don't know how it would look any different in uh, the present, but this is the the future form listed. So um, I will call. I called. That's your aorist. I have called. Notice your reduplication in the uh, kappa. That's standard perfect. Keklami. I have been called. Eklathane. Air is passive. I was called. Soma somatos ta. What word do we get in English? If you have a psychosomatic illness, you have an illness where your suke affects your soma. Psychosomatic. Um, A day. It is necessary. De a say. It will be necessary. A day. It was being necessary. House pair. So the house part is that as that we've already learned and you can put a host on the end of a and it turns it into the um, adverb and pair just means indeed so it's as indeed I guess literally or just as as if <coughs> did me okay do so okay tell me what the term Theodore means, literally. Gift of God. What does Dorothy mean? Feminine gift of God, right? So related to this uh, didomy word. Edoka. I gave. Me verbs, for some reason have heiress that have ka. That's never made sense to me because ka is what I learned is a perfect, but me verbs all take ka in their heiress, which is weird, but it's their language, not ours. So. And this would be a true perfect debt reduplication and ka. I have given 
I have been given, I was given. You good? Anybody watch the football game Saturday? I was having these Alabama Georgia flashbacks seeing uh, Notre Dame come back, and I wasn't right for about 18 hours. I shouldn't be that caught up, and I mean, I mean, I'm a grown man, you know. I should, but for some reason, and now I'm going to be okay until they play Florida. You know, and if they win, I'll be okay until they play Auburn. And then if they lose the national championship, I'll mope around for three or four months and be talking about two years later. <laughs> That's crazy. I should, I, I should see somebody about that. Uh, Etty. You want to know my mnemonic device for this word? So in college as a freshman, I had... This roommate, he was in love with this girl. Like, he had her pictures everywhere. And you know that uh, group, uh, the Commodores? You ever heard of the Commodores? Um, yes. Black vocal group. And they had a love song called Still. And that guy played it like 24 hours, seven days a week. In love with this girl. And I was trying to memorize Etty. And he's playing Commodore still in love with this girl. And somehow those things merged in my mind. And that's my mnemonic device. Like this guy's obsession with this girl and playing that song over and over. And I'm trying to memorize this word. And that doesn't even make sense, does it? But that's my mnemonic device. I guess it's all you need, right? Uh, and the weird thing is, he ended up not marrying that girl. And his best friend married my first cousin. And it was, that was a totally weird marriage. So, I don't know, but I got Etty out of it. I got Etty out of it. Still. Uh, Fusis. I got one. Hey, it's better than my one for still. So, uh, so mine for this is uh, biblical theology. So when uh, God breathes into Adam, he infusiaos him. What would you guess that would mean? In means in. And fusiao would be the verb form of what that is. He innatured him. So Adam was a dirt man. And did you know the Jews called that a golem? Did you know that? Uh, the dirt man is a golem before God infusiaos him. Here's what's cool. Infusiao in the Septuagint, same word in Ezekiel 37 of God bringing the dead army back to life, right? Now here's your mnemonic device. Jesus. The day he rose from the dead. John 20. He walks around breathing on the 12 disciples. Tell me what weird word in Greek that is. Emphusiaod. He walked around the room and emphusiaod his disciples. So, um, the Hebrew word golem, is that where Tolkien gets the name golem from? I think he just pulled it out of the air. He's, Tolkien's not that clever. He could have. <laughs> I can't even say that out loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a grudge against Tolkien. Did I ever tell you about it? No. You know, in his preface, he just goes on and on how Lord of the Rings isn't an allegory. 
Have you ever read that? Like an allegory is where you tell one story, but really you're telling a second story? You tell me, is Lord of the Rings an allegory or not? I mean, Mordor, I mean, how can it not be an allegory? So, he like swears up and down it's not an allegory. And I'm thinking, if it's not an allegory, I'm not going to read it, you know. So, I ran into this guy, Ivy League guy, who did his doctoral work on uh, Tolkien, and um, I said, help me. Um, he says it's not an allegory, and he, uh, so the guy said, yeah, everybody else would say it's an allegory, but Tolkien has a definition of allegory that nobody else agrees with, so it te under his definition, it's not an allegory. Everybody else would say it's an allegory, so my grudge kind of lessened then, but I was traumatized by that in the preface, so. How did we t get talking about that? Uh, micros. So what is a microscope? And I was in Greek a long time before I realized the difference between omega and omicros. Big O, little O, what begins with O? Wow. David Donald do dreamed a dozen donuts and a duck dog too. I mean, that sounds like Dr. Seuss, doesn't it? Kind of like the W words. Like the word Dr. Seuss. To you, yeah, you, and we don't hear it mm -hmm. like that. Uh, dynamite. We get dynamic uh, from it. Uh, Dunesami. Anybody know what they're telling you when they give it to you as an O oh my instead of an O oh fur? We'll learn this in the future, but they're telling you it's a deponent future, middle or <coughs> passive in form, active in meaning. Uh, so this has deponent future. We'll learn that um, in the future. I will be able. I was made able. Well, it looks air as passive, but because it's deponent, middle or passive in form, active in meaning. I have been able. Uh, so that. And see, it's just host plus tet, right? Oh, how can we remember this? We've like gone over it a gazillion times, right? NRK ain't ha logos. Hekastos. This word's always given me trouble. Um, it means each of several. We don't really have. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly a specialized demonstrative. Hemera. Okay, what word in English do we get from it? <laughs> we actually get a very sophisticated word. Have you ever heard of someone talk of ephemeral? Pleasures. What does that mean in Greek? It's from epihemera. Okay. Help me. Around the day pleasures. Ephemeral pleasures. Maybe the opposite of that. Pleasures that only last for a day. Fleeting pleasures or something. Temporary pleasures. Hemera. 
course, it's in the Lord's Prayer. Kai ta hamara, the give us today Luke's version, the epiusion arton ta kath hameron, what we need according to every day. Okay, aphusis <coughs> means nature. What would you guess fuo would mean? Hmm? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a lexical definition. And that's what it means. But it's related to I nature, I give a nature to. Like, I guess when you have a child, that's what you're doing. Uh, so what is Fuso? I brought forth. Okay. What does this say? I am surely telling you. What in the world does O mean? It comes straight into English. Oh, right. I am surely telling you. O, filler. Asu, O on E. Os, nominative, u, genitive, o, dative, on, accusative. What is the e ending? Right, uh, the vocative. And what what is a vocative? You're summoning, you're trying to get someone's attention. Friend, you know. So how would you translate O oh, filler? O oh, friend. I am surely telling you, O oh, friend, haughty. That it can, can mean because, but I think with Lego it's more likely it means that here. I am surely telling you, O oh, friend, that Yeah, what is the umen ending? We, uh, oikao is our verb. We live in a chorion. I'm surely telling you, oh friend, that we are living in a chorion. So it's active, we are living. We are living, present active indicative. In the plural, it would. That's what you're doing. We do this. Your first plural. So I'm telling you that we live in a Corian and Hati. I'm telling you that we are the children of Thrasolos. And Eurydice. That's exactly right. So, it's not and of? It is and of, but that's awkward. In, in, well, I'm not going to count off if you put that. We are children of Thrasos and of Eurydice. Yeah, that's a totally fair. Yeah, absolutely. And who is the we? Right, so he spells it out here. Who is the we? Remember, tell, you've got to move up. That's post-positive. Whenever you have tekai or te te, do it both and. Both I. Su stomos. 
both I and Thrasustomas in Helen. Uh, Stomas. Uh, that's bold now. Stoma. We get our stomach is related to our stoma. And in medicine, when you have a tracheotomy, the hole they make, they call a stoma. Um, so it's from this word. So I'm not going to tell you what the translation is, but I'll tell you if you get it right. N is right. And in the house is right. We is not right. In the house. Day, so on the other hand, in the house. Uh, that's right. There lives a certain other. That's right, but it's incomplete. Hmm. Man, if we just knew what Haymon was. Man, if it were just on that chart. What's that? There are a million entries. It's the first masculine personal pronoun. Right, it's a genitive uh, plural first person pronoun. What does that mean? What is the first person singular? I. And what is the plural? We. So how do you put we in the genitive? We live with another would have to be Hamas and you would have to have some form of oikao, oikumen, right? But we don't have that here. We just have Hamas in the genitive. I guess we just have to leave the field unconquered. I guess Achilles is just too, too strong for us today. For, even though... Even though our mom has given us the shield and said, with your shield or on it, don't come home if you throw that shield down. Let's throw the shield down and run home and try to explain how we lost the shield. Just gave up the battlefield. Now, he has more gods on his side than we do. I think we're going to lose this game. Uh, we're going to win. It's going to be glorious. All we have to do is take the word we and put it as a possessive. We live is nominative, and that would be with the uh, present. Uh, of us, of us. That sounds like taking we and putting it in the gender, right? Of us. So how does it fit in the? Uh, do we put Hamon? here or do we put it here in the house of us and how would we say that in english in our house in our house lives kiss kai ale 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 In our house lives 
and we need tes kai ale. What is tes without the accent on the first syllable? Someone or anyone? Someone. What is ale? Another. Uh, so I'm going to translate, in our house there lives another man. I just made it up. Isn't that what we do in Greek? Just make stuff up and guess? <laughs> <laughs> Ale, is Ale is feminine, so I'll guess elephant. In our house there lives <laughs> another elephant. No? You don't go for that? In our house lives another parent. Another woman, another woman. So I wonder who this other woman is. Who in the world is this other woman? He tells us, Ralph, Ralph tells us. But she, and that's how you do a but she. Uh, you just do the da with the article and it'll switch. But she is Trophos. Oh my goodness, I don't know what a Trophos is. She's a trophy wife. I don't know. Would Eurydice have a problem with a trophy wife, do you think? I don't know. Let's read. She is a trophos. Kai on a mazusi. What is usi? O ace a amen at usi. From they on a mazo. They call her. They call Tain Trophane Hamon Ladike. <laughs> they call the Trophone of us Ladike. So now we know she has a name. But she's not the wife of. Uh, Trophos, and she's a trof, trophos. Is she a servant? Is she? Is she a cook? And you're going to have this breakthrough. Oh, you're going to have this break. So you ask, poion ti est in trophos. What sort of thing is a trophos? And what am I going to tell you, fourth graders? <laughs> I'm telling you who she is. Right? So, I know. I know. It, it's so demeaning. Uh, but uh, it, anyway, uh, so this is his solution. What a Mikra Techno. So a trophos trephes small children. Is it a nurse? It is feeder. So she's nursing. She's nursing the little kids. So who is she in she's our terminology? A nanny. She's a nanny. She's a nanny. You know, in battle, in the ancient battle, you know, you hooked uh, shields together, and then you would push, uh, and there would come in battle that time where the guy in front of you would stumble. And when he stumbled, it's all over. Because he stumbles, his line break, you un 
do the shields, and it's a round. That's what we're doing to these sentences. We just had the guy stumble. He just stumbled. The, this battle is all over now. For a trophos, trephes, small children. See, I don't even have to memorize what trophos is. All I have to do is say, a trophos, trephes, small children. The small children then puts me in the realm of, well, she cooks for them, she takes care of them, and Rouse thinks we can get it, so I'm going to guess Nanny. She, she raises and nourishes. Uh, and it's a well-to-do family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so what does this say? What is un? Uh, noon is now. Un is. It's therefore, and it's post positive. So what does that mean? Therefore, hey trophos, hey hey metera. The nanny, and what kind of nanny is she? No idea what this word hemetera means, but I think we could guess it from somewhere we've already been on the chart today. What is the first plural personal pronoun? In English, that's right. What what would it be in Greek? It's on hey mace. Do you think hey mace and hey metera are connected? Let's make a great guess what hey metros, hey metera, hey meteron might mean. Therefore, the tropos, the Hemetera trophos oike met hemon in te oikia. With us. Oikaos, with us. Therefore, the trophos, the he hemetera trophos, oikes with Hema. I mean, this looks like an adjective to me. What kind of adjective? I'm going to guess 747. Therefore, our 747 tropos lives... Oh, you laugh. Well, my guess was better than yours. You didn't guess at all, right? <laughs> Therefore, our Georgia fan, Trophos, lives with us in the house. I'll take that one. I'll take that too. She sounds like a nice Trophos. <laughs> Therefore, our hey, Metera, hey, Moon. Huh. Hey, Metera, hey, Moon. This looks like an adjective. What's our guess? Hard working, that's better than NFL. Our nanny, therefore our nanny lives with us in the house. Does that make sense to you? And Alexander cried because there were no more worlds to conquer. Of course.